Great. Hello, everybody. I'm Wajiha Ibrahim with the Department of City Planning, um, and I'm presenting alongside Jackie Cornejo. Hi, everyone. Um, with HSID. So thank you so much for joining us uh, to learn more about the plan to house LA. This is the update to the city of LA's housing element for years 2021 to 2029. Um, today we'll be presenting proposed concepts and strategies for our housing element update. Um, again, if you have any te technical difficulty, please email housingelement at lacity.org or feel free to text or call the number that will be shared in the chat. Um, it's 213-978-2289. Today we also have um, Matt Glesney from the Department of City Planning and Claudia Monterosa from HCLA, um, along with other staff from the Housing Element team who are helping on the back end. So thank you all so much. Um, Matt and Claudia will be here um, to answer any questions along with other HSID staff during the Q&A session, which will be near the end of the webinar. Um, our presentation is expected to last about an hour, and so we're following that up with 30 minutes of Q&A. Um, of course, if we see more questions coming in, we're happy to stay longer. Um, so this webinar is being broadcast on Facebook Live and GoToWebinar. Um, if you're participating on GoToWebinar, you will be muted by default throughout the webinar. Um, if you'd like to provide a comment or ask a question, that can be done through the um, chat panel um, that you'll see on the control panel of GoToWebinar. Um, and we've also shown that here on the screen with blue arrows. Now, just note that there's a copy of this presentation that's available for you to download through the materials tab, if right above the, the chat tab on the control panel. Um, if you'd like to view live captioning, please use the link that we're including in the chat and um, comment box. And again, throughout the presentation, we invite you to type in your questions and comments. Um, we'll be responding to questions again near the end of the Q&A. Uh, near the end of the webinar during the live Q&A, and we'll also be taking um, polls through the webinar using um, menti.com, a fun new platform. Um, so to participate in the poll, you can either um, scan the QR code that you see on the right-hand side of my screen um, by simply opening your phone camera app and um, facing it uh, at the code over your screen. Um, you can also go on menti.com and put in the number that you see on the screen, 7019603. And again, this can be done on any device that has access to internet, smartphone, tablet, laptop. Um, and to those watching via Facebook, we are broadcasting this webinar on GoToWebinar, but you'll also be able to participate in our polls and we really encourage you to do so. Um, if we don't get to your question on Facebook, you can again email us at housingelement at lacity.org. Um, and we really hope to have a productive and respectful conversation on housing and how to make this a more livable and sustainable city for us all. So I still have the um, Menti, how to use Menti instructions on my screen. Um, and let's start with trying that out. So um, let's walk through this interactive tool and try it out. So let's see if we are able to get some responses. If you guys are having any issues, just um, go into menti.com and enter the code or scan the QR code. Let's see, we've got so many responses coming in. Jackie is our resident expert on recognizing zip codes. So I'll ja Jackie, I'll let you. Yeah, it looks like we have quite a few folks um, from the west side here, um, as well as K-Town and Westlake. And we have some folks also in the Silver Lake, East Hollywood area. 
We have some folks out in the valley. And it looks like we might also have some folks from uh, the more southern part of the city, close to the harbor. And we see a nice high there. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> um, now we have a good sense of um, where folks are coming from uh, for this webinar. Thank you all for participating. Yeah, very cool. Great. And again, if anyone is having issues getting into Menti, um, feel free to call or text the number that's in the chat box. So in the meantime, we'll move right along for the sake of time. Great. So the city's housing element update. Sorry, hold on one second. Sorry, everyone. All right, so the city's housing element update or the plan to house LA will be guided by a vision where we establish the aim of what our city would look like and feel like if we met all our housing goals. The update will look into our housing landscape needs to determine what our needs are, including who is served by the housing stock, how well they are being served and who isn't. The update will analyze existing resources and constraints by evaluating if the city has the right planning requirements known as land use and zoning, to meet its housing needs. We will look at our existing affordable housing stock and what needs to be preserved. And we will look at what is stopping us from achieving our housing goals. Finally, we will create an action plan of the goals, policies, and implementation programs to help us realize our vision that we will spend the majority of our time on during this presentation. Over the next year, pl city planning and the Housing Community Investment Department will use your input and suggestions to assess the city's housing needs, list existing constraints and resources, and make an action plan to achieve the city's collective vision for housing. So we'll start with some context here. Housing elements were established by the state of California in 1969 as a mandatory part of the general plan. The housing element identifies the city's housing conditions and needs. It also establishes the goals, objectives, and policies to meet those needs. Under state law, the housing element must be updated every eight years. The plan to house LA, or our housing element update, will cover the years 2021 through 2029. The state requires that jurisdictions do their fair share to plan for adequate affordable housing, as well as affirmatively furthering fair housing. This means proactively preventing discrimination based on race, color, religion, national origin, sex, disability, family status, sexual orientation, gender identity, source of income, medical condition, age, genetic information, ancestry, and marital status. This means that a housing element must proactively seek to advance the goals of the Fair Housing Act and reduce racially and ethnically concentrated poverty and disparities in access to opportunity. All these requirements recognize that housing is a critical need and that the government and private sector must work together to address the needs of all residents. A centerpiece of the housing element law is that cities must identify adequate zoning capacity to meet existing and projected needs. The number of housing units each city must plan to accommodate during the eight year period is known as a regional housing needs assessment or RINA. RINA accounts for both projected need, which includes factors like new births, people moving here for new jobs and so on, and existing need, which includes, uh, includes people already living here in substandard housing, like overcrowded units or paying more than they can afford. During the fifth cycle housing element that covers 2013 through 2021, the city had a RINA goal of 82,002 new units by October, 2021. For this upcoming update, we have a significantly higher RINA of approximately 460,000 housing units, which includes 180,000 units to meet the needs of lower income households. The higher number for this cycle is primarily due to changes in state law that RINA include accounting for the existing need for housing, not just projected needs. These RINA numbers are statutory requirements, which means we must plan for this allocation or risk major funding losses or other state action. While the written methodology and numbers are important standalone topics, tonight will, or today, <laughs> uh, we'll be focusing um, not just on the RINA or the site selection process, rather we'll be developing concepts, policies, and programs to meet our housing needs. 
So how much housing do we need to plan for? For us to reach our estimated RINA targets, Los Angeles would need to permit an average of 57,000 units each year, including 33,000 affordable units per year. Therefore, it is important to take a step back to review the current housing element to assess how we as a city will develop the goals, objectives, policies, and programs to reach these targets. So we launched a pro, uh, the update of the housing element last winter and quickly began outreach with a series of in-person digital events during the vision phase. Today, we'll be introducing the concepts that will help shape the plan to house LA. We plan to release our draft plan this winter. The process will conclude with adoption in summer 2021. Unlike other planning efforts, we have a state required adoption deadline of October 2021. So today we'll be sharing six concepts and the supporting strategies we are exploring to implement these concepts. These concepts were informed by two main components, state housing element requirements in the RINA, which we discussed earlier in this presentation, and feedback we've received during the vision phase of outreach from the public and uh, the housing element task force. In addition to sharing these proposed concepts, we'll also be sharing the strategies and programs we propose to support the goals of these concepts. You'll see here some of these terms, such as concept, strategy, and program throughout the presentation. When developing these concepts, key priorities emerge from our outreach and state guidance. These priorities are reflected throughout all our concepts and strategies and include ensuring we have enough homes for current and future residents to directly address our affordable housing shortage, undoing the policies that resulted in limited access to housing and other opportunities based on race and other protected classes um, I listed previously, and promoting sustainability and resiliency. We also want to acknowledge that as part of the process of gathering public input, there are important considerations in crafting these concepts, strategies, and program ideas. What we're presenting today are very much draft ideas and we want your feedback. Many city departments and agencies are also involved in carrying out the work of the plan. Some of the work the housing element team has been doing is collecting information from the many departments that interface with the housing element and capture how, we've, how we're doing on many of these programs and what may need to be revised for this update. We also need to understand the overall role of the city in carrying out these interventions. These concepts, strategies, and programs may be contingent on the availability of funding and staffing. These ideas should be realistic, feasible, and consistent with other goals the city has. But lastly, this is an, this is an opportunity for us to think big. Um, and before I continue, I really want to apologize to those who've been following um, through closed caption. We've been experiencing some difficulties um, and we're trying to work on those on the back end. Um, so appreciate um, your patience and understanding. So in summary, these are the six concepts we have developed and they fall under these six themes we see on the screen. They are housing stability and anti-displacement, housing production, access to opportunity, homelessness, the built environment, and meeting the needs of all Angelinos. So let's dive right in and start with the first theme, housing stability and anti-displacement. So to begin, we wanna learn a little bit more about you all. Um, do you live as a renter or tenant, a homeowner, or are currently unhoused? Again, please scan the QR code or log into menti.com and enter the numeric code to respond to the questions. And we'll give a second um, for folks to respond. All right, looks like we have about an even mix of renters and homeowners. 
Thank you all again. And then I see that if um, if any of you are having any technical difficulties, you can text or call the number 213-978-2289 or email housingelement at lacity.org. So Los Angeles is a city of renters with over 63% of residents living in housing units they do not own. There's also a significant number of Angelinos that are unhoused, an estimated 11%. So there are many factors that cause housing instability and displacement. And to dive deeper on this topic, we identify two types of displacement. There is direct displacement where existing tenants face direct eviction. Often this is due to new development, rental units being taken off the market as permitted by the Ellis Act or a legal eviction. Indirect displacement is when new, new investment and speculative real estate practices drive up rent demand, which then drives up housing prices, bringing wealthier and typically whiter residents to occupy housing previously available to low-income households. This is often associated with what we understand as gentrification. Today, as both, today, both direct and indirect displacement present a major threat to communities in Los Angeles, especially communities with large numbers of people of color and low rates of home ownership. So where is the displacement occurring? Well, housing stability affects all of Los Angeles, but based on some initial research by HCLA, we are seeing the greatest risk of displacement in the areas indicated in dark green on this map. This includes West Adams, Lamert Park, Silver Lake and Echo Park, and in the Hollywood area. As we are planning for the future, we need policies, programs, and resources to provide tenant stability. As such, to respond to stability and displacement pressures, we propose our first concept to be to protect Angelinos, especially persons of color, from indirect and direct displacement and ensure stability of existing vulnerable communities. There are a number of programs uh, that exist today where we address this that were revised or developed as part of our existing housing element. Some of those are captured here as part of the city's work to prevent tenant to protect tenants um, through the enforcement of RSO, promoting or our rent stabilization ordinance, promoting the overall creation and preservation of housing for low income residents, as well as providing financial assistance to homeowners and developers of affordable housing. We have a lot of material to cover today, so we won't be going into depth into every single one of these existing programs. But if you would like to review this slide more closely again, a copy of the presentation is available in the handouts tab um, for those on GoToWebinar. So for this concept, we are considering three key strategies in a number of programs. We will be highlighting these potential programs by strategy and we'll be ta briefly talking about each one. Again, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to chat them in and we will be responding to them at the end of the presentation. So the first strategy is to protect tenants and RSO or rent controlled housing stock. We've identified three potential programs and policies here, including expanding known at loss, housing replacement, and a tenant's right to return um, requirements. This means that we would require the, that demolished housing to be replaced with more or the same affordable housing and ensure that tenants can return to affordable replacement units in their neighborhoods. The second one is to expand and implement our eviction defense program to provide free legal assistance to renters. And the third one is exploring an amendment to the RSO to have rental increases in LA's rent control units only tied to inflation rather than the automatic 3% increase each year. Another strategy to implement concept number one is to promote tools that achieve housing stability and reduce the wealth gap. This include exploring ways to promote shared equity or collective ownership models, such as community land trusts or limited equity co-ops. In addition to community models, we are also looking to support individual equity by expanding first-time homebuyer assistance programs 
and other ways we are looking to, pro to support tenant stability and equity include creating ways to allow tenants or community organizations the opportunity to purchase when a building is listed for sale. And lastly, explore new models to preserve affordable housing. The third approach under this first concept is to ensure existing residents can remain in their communities. One program idea to explore is establishing community preference policies. Currently, new affordable housing is available to everyone who is qualified. In areas that are uh, experiencing displacement, the city could explore giving preference to existing residents, especially those most vulnerable to displacement, to live in these housing units. Another program would be to study and identify for land use decisions to prevent future displacement. And we're also looking to explore ways to protect tenants for a longer period of time with permanent affordable housing. Today, affordability covenants or requirements expire, which leaves previously protected tenants exposed and requiring affordability to be permanent could provide long-term tenant protections. And now I will pass it uh, back to Wajia. Thanks, Jackie. So our second overarching theme for the next concept is housing production. LA area residents are, oops. There we go. Um, LA area residents are more likely to live in overcrowded conditions than any other metro area across the country. As you can see in this chart, the LA region has the highest number of adults um, uh, per, per home of all metro areas. And this gives us some insight into what households can afford and it indicates that residents are living with roommates, living with family members or multiple families because there is not housing available at an affordable price that meets their needs. So this shortage of housing has created a cost burden for Angelinos. In addition to the highest overcrowding rates, LA also has the highest percentage of cost burdened households of any major American city. This means that our housing shortage has resulted in almost half of all Angelinos spending more than one third of their income on housing costs, such as mortgage or rent. Um, this burden is more significant for renters, as shown on, on the right-hand side. You can see that six in 10 renters um, really struggle to afford rent. So this leads us to our next concept, our second concept, which is um, in which we propose to meaningfully increase the production of new housing, particularly affordable housing. There are a number of existing programs where we address housing production and affordable housing production that were revised or developed as part of our existing housing element. We have um, planning at a neighborhood level and um, that has created land use incentives for the construction of on-site affordable housing. We have also created opportunities on our existing properties by repurposing existing buildings or building additional housing units. We've also created a new permanent source for funding affordable housing with the linkage fee, and that continues to finance the construction of affordable housing. For this concept, we are considering increasing zoned capacity for housing as one of the key strategies. Now, potential programs for this strategy could include um, planning for increased capacity to realistically meet our housing needs as our past planning efforts haven't really resulted in enough housing to meet our needs. Uh, we also propose creating zoning tools for missing middle developments like bungalow courts, multiplexes, and courtyard buildings to encourage low contextual density in our existing neighborhoods. We also propose looking for opportunities to expand ADUs, um, micro units, and other forms of small, more affordable homes. And we want to evaluate how our existing neighborhood plans, like specific plans and overlays, are delivering for our housing needs. 
Another strategy we're proposing is to incentivize mixed income development. Um, so a mixed income development is one that includes both market rate and affordable housing units or a mix of incomes. So potential programs to implement this strategy is exploring new models of affordable housing development on publicly owned land. Um, increasing or even maximizing the percentage of affordable housing included in market rate housing developments and expanding streamlining to remove process barriers for projects that include affordable housing. A third strategy we're proposing is to improve access to affordable units. This can look like exploring expansion of affordable unit registries and um, the website to advertise new affordable unit availability, similar to the one launched recently for accessible units. And this can also look like locating new sources of funding and financing of affordable housing. For the next concept, I'll pass it back on to Jackie. Great, thanks, Wajia. So the next concept is access to opportunity. So let's talk about access to opportunity. And we have another poll question for you guys. So when you're looking for a place to live in Los Angeles, what do you look for in your neighborhood? Uh, you'll have the option to add um, up to three words. So you can go to menti.com and type in the code you see here, 7019603 or if you have, uh, if your phone has a camera, you can scan the QR code. So we see here, good schools. Safety. Low income affordability safe streets, trees, green space. It seems like a lot of folks are really resonating with affordability, safety, trees, walkable, cleanliness, good schools. Thank you again for sharing. So what does access to opportunity look like? Here we see opportunity maps or resource maps created by the state that are intended to display which areas offer low-income children greater access to economic advancement, higher educational attainment, and good physical and mental health. The mapping overlays multiple opportunities such as housing, jobs, education, et cetera, and burdens such as pollution and poverty and displays outcomes on a high to low scale. Areas indicated in darker blue are areas where opportunity is high and areas in yellow are where opportunity is low. Approximately 83% of our parcels in our highest resource areas are single family. We know that past zoning practice has often maintained single family uses in the highest resource areas and removed single family zoning in lower resource areas. Systemic racism and other inequities have influenced these land use decisions. High resource areas have not built as much housing, especially affordable housing compared to areas without these amenities and resources. How we zone the city not only affects our ability to produce a more livable city, but also ability to achieve our goal of affirmatively furthering fair housing. Access to opportunity is just simply not available in every neighborhood. So the third concept we'd like to share is to increase access to opportunities and address racial and economic segregation in the city by planning for more affordable and mixed income housing in high resource areas. There are a number of programs where we address this that were revised or developed as part of the existing housing element. Some of those are captured here as part of the city's work to increase access and in housing uh, in high resource areas, as well as a percentage of affordable housing units. 
again, we won't go, we won't dive into every single one of these um, existing programs, but you, again, you'll have, we, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in and we'll respond to them when we can. To implement concept number three, we are proposing a strategy to increase housing capacity in high resource areas. And to do that, we're proposing the following potential programs, including updating the city's this updating the citywide growth strategy to ensure equity is a core part of all future land use decisions and planning, develop citywide housing goals by community plan areas to ensure a more equitable distribution of affordable housing across the city, establishing explore esta establishing minimum density requirements so that developers who could not build less housing that is allowed on a site to promote full utilization of land zone for multi-family housing development. And lastly, strategically increase affordable housing opportunities in areas with low rise development and single family homes so that additional density can be contextualized in our existing neighborhoods. The next proposed strategy is to increase affordable housing production in high resource areas. This proposed strategy is building on the previous concept and strategies mentioned that aim at addressing displacement and investment in low income communities, but is unique to affordable housing production in high resource areas. This could look like creating land use and financial incentives to prioritize affordable housing developments in high resource areas, as well as making it easier for affordable housing to be built in these areas and use public land in high resource areas for affordable housing development. And I will now pass it back to Wajia. Thanks, Jackie. And I just wanna take a quick second to remind everyone to um, keep questions coming in in the questions tab, and we will address those um, shortly. Okay, so the fourth concept falls under the topic of homelessness. And to start off this conversation, we have another poll. So as we're talking about homelessness, um, we'd like to know, have you or someone you're close to experienced homelessness um, or personally felt like you were at risk of losing your home? Great, we've got responses coming in. In case anyone needs to scan the QR code once again, Right. Great. Thank you all so much for sharing. Yeah, I mean, we, we really do want to acknowledge that housing instability and homelessness is increasingly becoming a very real and very felt issue for many people. I mean, clearly we can see that there's quite a number of you that have um, personally or known someone that has experienced homelessness or was at risk of losing their home. So let's see what we're see seeing in LA. Even prior to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the current economic crisis, um, we've seen that homelessness is on the rise, both for those who are unsheltered as shown in the teal on this chart over here, and also for those who are sheltered shown in the darker blue. So this means that while more shelter has been provided, it's just not making a dent in the total need. Increasing housing costs are very closely tied to increasing rates of homelessness. And there's a need for more permanent housing solutions for previously or currently unhoused residents. We see that the impacts of homelessness are, um, of the homelessness crisis are felt most drastically amongst people of color, specifically black residents and Latinos. And we have to note that there's a disproportionate impact to black Angelinos. While they represent only 9% of all Angelinos, they're around 38% of those that are experiencing homelessness and there simply are not enough resources to address the root cause. So seeing these patterns of homelessness in LA, we have developed our fourth concept, which reads, prevent and end homelessness in a manner that centers human dignity and respect 
by developing early interventions, significantly expanding permanent housing options, and providing appropriate services and support. There are many programs where we address homelessness today, and these were revised or developed as part of our existing housing element, and also some of these were developed independently of it. Um, but these include providing immediate shelter to those experiencing homelessness, um, connecting individuals and families to supportive services, and increasing housing opportunities. And again, just for the sake of time, I'm not reading through all the bullets, but you do have a PDF of this presentation um, made available to you in, in the handout section of the control panel. So for our first strategy um, to implement this concept that we've developed, um, we have some ideas to promote crisis intervention strategies and homelessness prevention. And these include expanding targeted services and early interventions to those that are highest risk of homelessness, um, such, such as programs that are specific to people who have been impacted by the criminal justice system, people at risk of eviction, people with disabilities, um, and transition-aged youth, which are those that are either, are those that are coming out of foster care, um, foster care. Another proposed strategy, <clears throat> excuse me, is to develop permanent housing solutions. And we propose doing this by increasing funding for the production of permanent supportive housing, which is housing that's permanently affordable and it's accompanied with supportive services like counseling, for example. We're also looking at expanding programs to develop deeper affordability for our lowest income residents, meaning individuals who make less than 24,000 a year. And we're looking to support implementation of Project Home Key, a new program that's developed by the state to prioritize permanent housing for unhoused individuals. And the third strategy that we've developed is to provide a compassionate response to unsheltered residents by exploring um, providing incentives to expand needed community amenities in neighborhoods uh, in neighborhoods with unhoused populations. So these amenities could include hygiene stations, fresh water, etc. Um, we are exploring amending shelter regulations in the zoning code to remove process barriers that prevent shelters from being built. So as we move on to our fifth strategy, I'll pass it to Jackie. Thanks, Ujia. So the fifth concept theme falls under the topic of the built environment. Housing is more than just a place to live. It's a critical part of the infrastructure that our communities need to thrive. To ensure our communal well-being, we need housing that is close to public transit, parks, markets, community centers, and places where you can meet friends and family designed with the needs of local communities in mind, especially lower income communities of color, um, communities that reflect the history and culture of our unique diverse communities, and housing that keeps us safe in case of disasters like earthquakes, wildfires, public health emergencies, and extreme heat. Seeing the role that the built environment plays around housing in Los Angeles, we've developed the fifth concept, which reads, design and regulate housing to promote health and well-being, increase access to amenities, contribute to a sense of place, foster community and belonging, and plan for a more sustainable future. How we address this today. So the city has many well-established programs to ensure that our housing is habitable and safe, largely through inspections and code enforcement. The city also works to enhance livability in our communities with tools including design review, historic preservation, neighborhood specific zoning, and park funding regulations. Today we hear a lot about the interrelated topics of sustainability, resilience, and environmental justice. Generally, sustainability describes our efforts to minimize the human impact on the environment. Resiliency describes our ability to prevent and respond to disasters. And environmental justice includes efforts to ensure that low-income communities of color do have 
greater environmental burdens or fewer environmental assets. The map to the right demonstrates that many of the same communities that have lower access to opportunity also have more environmental justice concerns. As you can see, many departments and offices are actively working in these programs. The first strategy we propose is to design around fostering community. Potential programs include promoting and expanding new housing models that can provide options for a range of household sizes and configurations. Um, acknowledging that we need housing typologies to, that serve all Angelenos. And to improve neighborhood design and amenities through Recode LA and our community plan programs. Recode LA is a process led by city planning to update our zoning code and integrate design requirements for ground floor design, window ratios, park screening, and much more. Recode LA is being rolled out through the community plan updates and will provide more tailored regulations for each community in Los Angeles. The second strategy we've developed is to increase access to public amenities that will improve health and well being. Potential programs could include encourage and incentivize community amenities as part of housing requirements. This could mean daycares, open space, shade canopy, grocery stores, etc. And the second one is to identify displacement prevention strategies when planning for infrastructure like parks, transit, public investment projects, and new job centers. The third strategy is to plan for a resilient, sustainable, and equitable LA. Potential programs could, could include expanding the reuse of vacant buildings to residential uses, if they include affordable units, and expanding the implementation of existing long-term plans, such as the plan for a healthy LA, which is our environmental justice element, LA's Green New Deal, or our sustainability plan, and the sustainability plan. And I'll pass it back to Ajia. Thanks. So the sixth and final concept falls under the topic of meeting the needs of all Angelinos, uh, in which we focus on meeting the housing needs of our diverse population, regardless of age, life circumstance, household size or ability. But before we dig in, we have one final poll question for you all. Could your current home accommodate an elderly family member who's um, elderly family member or friend with special needs? So to really think about this question, I'm going to ask, um, could someone still get around uh, in a wheelchair or um, with a walking device in your current house or apartment or wherever you live? Um, would they be able to switch to a medical bed if they needed to? While we have responses coming in, I can share the QR code in case anybody needs to scan in again. For anyone on Facebook Live. Great. Yeah, thank you all for sharing. Um, just looking at these results from the poll, we we can see that our current housing doesn't meet the needs of an age, of aging Angelinos, um, let alone other people with disabilities or other varied needs. Um, in our current case, our poll looks almost almost half and half. But when we talk about the city of LA. Um, we see that families with children and people with disabilities, um, they might, they often face discrimination, lack of supply or cost barriers when trying to rent um, an apartment. People with disabilities that need housing designed to support their varied needs and uh, varied needs that allow for independent living. And also when we think about um, Angelinos, we think we see that the overall city demographic trends show that there's a growing share of Angelinos who are aging, and there are fewer and fewer opportunities for seniors to age in their homes and in their neighborhoods. And while senior populations are increasing, the share of children is declining. 
And this reflects who has access to the opportunity to afford to live in the city. And it also indicates that families with younger children are increasingly unable to find adequate housing in the city. Seeing these unmet housing needs, we've developed um, concept six to read, build, operate, and maintain welcoming and accessible housing for all Angelinos, including those with disabilities, large families, older adults, and other people facing housing barriers. Today, we have programs that ensure accessibility requirements are met for existing housing and that housing opportunities are not discriminatory. Um, there are also long range, long range planning efforts in place for residents with special needs, as well as programs that increase housing access for individuals with disabilities. For example, HCID LA has the Accessible Housing Program um, that has a goal of ensuring that 4,000 existing and new affordable housing units have accessible accommodations for individuals with disabilities. And this is accompanied by a newly launched accessible unit registry that's available to landlords um, and tenants searching for accessible housing and service providers. Um, the first strategy that we have developed to really implement this concept of meeting the needs of all Angelinos um, reads in each neighborhood provide housing that can accommodate people with disabilities, larger families, and seniors. And potential programs for this strategy could include expediting and removing barriers for housing that's serving people with special needs, including elder care, senior living, memory care, affordable rehabilitation, disability housing, and transitional housing. Um, another potential program could be promoting uh, development of new housing models that meet the unique, uh, that meet special needs, such as co-living, shared spaces, micro units, um, roommate matching services for seniors, and even guest room housing. We're also exploring creating an incentive program for accessible units, and um, we also propose an update and expand to implement an age-friendly action plan. The second strategy that's developed is to um, provide housing for households that face the greatest barriers. Potential programs could include pursue uh, new funding sources for affordable special needs housing and expand rental assistance or voucher programs. The third strategy we've developed is to strengthen anti-discriminatory, anti-discrimination protections and enforcement. Potential programs could include expand proactive fair housing enforcement to include new state law protections and enforce the new state anti-discrimination provisions for justice impacted populations. So, to recap, I'll pass it to Jackie. Great, thanks, Swijia. So these are the six concepts, again, that we've presented to you all today and are looking for your feedback. We presented a very comprehensive view of what should inform our vision for housing for the next eight years. Based on the feedback we receive over the next several sessions, these concepts will be further refined and guide the housing element team as we draft the plan update. Again, a draft will be, received, will be released to the public sometime in winter 2021. 